subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, and we have the letter lam, ba, and fa, and kay, what he discussed and he emphasized on in the Quran. And he called it, in these letters, lam, they're, the lam here that defines the reason of something to take place, like we said, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes here to, to give you a clarification to why he had revealed certain things. So he said, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكُ A book that we, a blessed book that we had revealed. For what reason was it revealed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The letter lam in the Quran, then it's called lam al-ta'rif. This lam is the lam of clarification. To clarify to you the reason behind the, the revelation of the Quran. So he said, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا ayate, So that they can comprehend and ponder its words. So the lam here came to clarify, lam al-ta'rif. And then he came, he also, many examples of the Quran. He said, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ And as a reminder for those who are willing to understand and take it upon themselves. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another example he gave us in the Qur'an. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We have made you an ummah that is balanced. For what reason? So the lamb that came directly after, لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء So that you may be witnesses upon other nations الناس, so here the letters here came for indication and clarification of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed in the Quran <coughs> and now kay, the word kay, it came here as a statement for what reason so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to separate behind the statement that he gave in the ayah so that you may not fall into this or so that you may not act upon this or so that you may not for be so you can be aware of something that is the reason behind the word k it's to keep the reader and the reciter aware of what they should or should not be falling into and then after that he gave us an example of the ba the letter ba so he and many examples of the said bima kuntum ta'malun aw bima kanu yaksibun so now, it is the cause and effect of everything that happens in the Qur'an. There's always a cause and effect. Now the effect of what they had done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, He rewarded them for what they've been acting upon. Or they have been punished for what their actions that they took upon themselves. And then, speaking of disbelievers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We punished them. For what reason have they punished them? And that is because, بِأَنَّهُمْ So the ba'i here came to separate and to show you the example of the cause and effect of a situation or a statement. And the importance behind that, we said Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he came in, the, in, this, in these certain parts of the book to clarify to the reader and to the questioner that you may have fallen into this. There is always a cause and effect for, for every action that you take upon yourself. So to show us also the value of the Qur'an, the Qur'an, every part of it and every ayah is important. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala rewards us, Rahamkumullah. <coughs> he rewards us for what? He rewards us for every letter in the Qur'an, not just every ayah. When he said, لا أقول ألف 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 لا ميم حرف بل ألف حرف ولا من حرف ما ميم حرف. He said, I don't say that ألف is a, ألف لا ميم is a letter on its own, no. But alif is a harf, lam is a harf, amim is a harf. So all in all, every letter that you recite, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala values every single letter in the Qur'an. لذلك, he said, قُلْ لَهُ إِنْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنْسَ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ Say that if the jinn and mankind came all together to try to gather a Qur'an similar to this, they will never be able to. Because the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Do they not comprehend the Qur'an? Why? If it were, if it came and it has been revealed from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will find many contradictions, and differences in the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that this, well, you will never find that kind of contradiction in the Qur'an. Nothing contradicts one another. Everything aligns with one another. Unlike we have 
like the Jews and the Christians, when they change up their books, the Old Testament to the New Testament, and the, and this and this and whatnot, it contradicts one another. And that's what happens when man, you know, touches the divinity that is made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فقال رحمه الله تعالى لكي يبقى عليه أمرا بهما تتم سعادته وفلاحه He said أحدهم He said for a person to find true happiness and the complete happiness and success for themselves قال أحدهما أن يعرف تفاصيل أسباب الشر والخير ويكون له بصيرة في ذلك بما يشاهده في العالم وما جربه في نفسه وغيره وما سمعه من أخبار من أخبار الأمم قديما وحديثا. Who wants to read this part? Uh, page 49. Uh, do you want me to airdrop you the book? Did you send it? Did you receive it? What's the name of What's the name of your phone? What's the name of the phone? Apple. No, what's the name of it? Apple. Uh, Saad, can you figure? It? <laughs> what are you doing? Who wants to read? Go ahead. The first paragraph. Know the details of each individual's position insight into that insight is not to take from one more step of way. Personal experiences and awareness. As I said about physics and current psychology, the most beneficial way to execute this is for reasons regarding the Quran. This is a question. Reason was good and Zutron sufficient. The Quran is followed by the Sunnah of Prophet of Hill. In, in, it, in, it, in it, its counterpart in the second revelation. Thus, whoever dedicates the complaint to them both shall be surprised for them over all else out as they will both port portray the good and evil along with their causes as if you are literally observing it Jazakallah. now so to know the details of evil and good and to have a clear vision in this is from what we witness around us. It's why we tell each other. We learn from the mistakes of others so we do not fall into it. And if we observe the goodness, so we can acquire it. Right? So Ibn al-Qayyim is telling the readers. Now, it's away from the question now. Because the question I fell into this trap. So he's telling you and letting you know <clears throat> that in order to understand the meaning of, of certain things and not to fall into certain situations, Observe your surroundings. Be aware of your surroundings. See the evil that goes on so you can avoid it. So you can avoid that evil. And when people are on righteousness, you are to take that and try to learn from it. And how do you know, how do you know that? So he said, from what you have heard from news around you of others, whether it's from things that happened in the past or things in your current, it's the reason why we have history books. That's what I tell people. The importance of history is for what? So that we can learn from the past to perfect our present so we can build a better future. And that is the purpose of the history books. And that is the purpose of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing that to the, to, the, to the Prophet in the Quran. And this is why we tell you about the, of the stories of that those that come before you. So that you may not fall into this, and your people do not fall into this, and so that you may be patient upon the path that you're in, because they have done it. 
the days will repeat itself. Everything will repeat itself. But only what you, are, what you should be aware of is the things that people have fallen to so you don't fall into the same. It, to make, it takes an idiot to reoccur the same things that already happened in the past. And then someone would ask, well, why did we do this? How do we fall into this? And, and then they'd be surprised that oh, people before me had done the same thing. Well, if you had read the books, you wouldn't have done so. So that's what Imam Al-Qayyim is telling. This is why you should contemplate the Quran. You should comprehend the words of Allah in order to benefit from it. So that we, are, we said, كَمَا قِيلَ السَّعِيدُ مَنِ اتَّعَضَ بِغَيْرِهِ وَالشَّقِيُّ مَنِ اتَّعَضَ بِهِ غَيْرُهُ he said, the happy one is the one who took it, who's aware of what others had done and the one who will face hardships or the one that is in hardships is the one that others are aware of. Meaning what? He said, the one that will find true happiness is the one who will learn from others' mistakes. But the one who will continue to struggle is the one who is take is the one to be taken as a mistake. Is to is to learn from his mistakes. So if you see somebody that is happy, he said the the one who will find true happiness is the one who learns from others' mistakes. And the one who is struggling is our job to learn from their mistakes. The one who is going through tough times and going through hardships, we learn from the mistakes that they have done, so we don't fall into these hardships that they are in. So he said. So we say, Allahumma la taj'al ghayri as'ada bima allamtani bi. The Salaf, rahimahullahu ta'ala, they used to say this dua. And they said, Allahumma la taj'al ghayri as'ada bima allamtani minni wa la taj'alni li ghayri ibarah. They would say, oh Allah, do not make others happier than I from what, you have, from what they have learned from me. Meaning what? Meaning I should pursue much more hap like happiness far more than they can have because I'm trying to push myself even much more further. It doesn't mean I don't want them to be happy. No. He said he wants to emphasize, they want to emphasize on their happiness into seeking the knowledge of Allah and not falling into the mistakes of others. And do not make me an example. And do not make me an example for others. No one wants to be an example to be used. You know, have you ever, you know, when you grow up in a household, your mother was like, oh, you always hear this, you're becoming like this, you're becoming like this brother, you become like this sister. It, then that sister and that brother became an example in the family. Right? You don't want to. And then you then, it makes you annoyed that you're using an example in that family. You don't want to be that example. So he said, the best for man and for mankind is to look at what others had done and take them as an example. And to switch the wrongs and the, the mistakes that people have done and flip that into goodness and righteousness. Because what they had learned to not fall into. When people try to use others as an example, they say, look at the nations, look at those who can't come before you. Such people had been destroyed or such people have been successful. Or they would say, look at such person, look what they had done in their lives. They would always use these comparisons and examples. But the best for a person is to be used as an example that is the best example for others and not the worst examples. When they say, do not make me an example, meaning do not make me the mistake that others learn from, but make us the good deeds that people want to take from. So, so for every individual, they have to understand, they have to have an observation of the good and wrong and the evil. And they have to have an open mind understanding to that. You cannot be blind upon certain paths. And what they see in the entirety of this world, specifically the people, what do you learn from others? And what do you see from others? You know, they say that ignorance is the one who lives this world without the knowledge or without, without observation. You know, they say the most quiet person is the most observing person in the room. Because the person who's sitting in the room, they're now they're going to pay to every single detail that's sitting there quietly. But the person who talks a lot, 
they're only focused on the words that's running out of their mouth, right? So they always say the quietest person in the room is the most observant, and they learn a lot. So then when they speak, the people honor their words when they talk. And that's a, uh, my brother, my, a similar example to that. He's always the quietest person in the room, and he's known to be the shadow of my father and I because he always stands there. And then after we leave, he tells me, he goes like, Hamza, this person, this such, you need to be aware of such and such and such. Because he pays attention to everything that's around him. And it's, a, it's, it's out of wisdom and it's a great tool. And it's a great way to go on about things, but that's just an example. Not, I'm not saying people who do talk are people not to take. No, just an example. Now. قال رحمه الله تعالى وما أنفع ما في في ذلك تدبر القرآن فإنه كفيل بذلك على أكمل الوجوه وفيه أسباب الخير والشر جميعا مفصلة مبينة ثم السنة فإنها شقيقة القرآن وهي الوحي الثاني ومن صرف إليهما عانيته اكتفى بهما من غيرهما وهما يريانك الخير والشر وأسبابهما حتى كأنك تعاين ذلك عيانا. Who wants to read the, um, the second paragraph on page 49. Observation. Observation. If you were to ponder, oh no, I'm cool. We have to. <laughs> Whilst the corresponding, you have learned from the Quran. When you come across the details of Allah's outline from you know that he found that he had built in the Quran. You will come to realize that the Quran is the truth. Most people eat the two most important things that Allah gives and promises to God's children. This is because history is a detailed account. History is a detailed account of some aspects that Allah has built into the Quran book and our relations to the overall cause of good and evil. Second, <laughs> what is the meaning of justice being used? So. Yeah, we're going to get to the second one. Zakallah. So, Imam al Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, and this is very, this is things that we have been addressing for the past year and a half about the Quran and Sunnah and the value that they fulfill one another. Right? So, he said, Thumma Sunnah fa inna shaqiqatul Quran. The Sunnah is side by side with the Quran, it comes together. لذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى سأل من القرآن وما أتاكم الرسول فخذوه ما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا whatever the prophet has given to you then you are to follow it whatever he had commanded you with you are to follow that and what he had forbidden you from you are to what? avoid it فانتهوا لذلك أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول لعلكم ترحمون obey Allah and his messenger so that Allah سبحانه وتعالى may bestow his mercy upon you now so, the complete obedience that a person needs to look at. We look at the action. You have a great example and a role model to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet for those who are seeking the Allah and the hereafter. So what he's telling you is that how did the Prophet raise the companions? How did they act upon certain, certain things? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we saw a man who was overwhelmed, right? And we, we, and we said this hadith. He said, oh, Umama, what brought you to the masjid at a time that is not prayer? He said, he said, I've been overwhelmed and stressed. And he said, and debt has overcome me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, kalimat. Do I not teach you a few words? If you say them in the morning and in the evening, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
take care of your debts and remove that overwhelmness and stress from you. قال نعم he said indeed يا رسول الله and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him to make a dua so ذكر and dua so هو رد القدر بالقدر والدعاء قدر is to return is to to change قدر with what with قدر and dua in its own self is قدر is قدر فالدعاء يرد القدر كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني من ما يوافقه الله سبحانه وتعالى للتدبر في القرآن والتأمل في هدايته وكذلك في سنة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام so Allah سبحانه وتعالى is telling you to, to contemplate the Quran completely and everything and comprehend the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ففيه ما الكفاية في, الهد- في هداية العبد إلى أسباب الخير they are enough for a person to be guided upon goodness. وحثاً على فعلها وبياناً للآثار العظيمة المترتبة عليها في الدنيا والآخرة. And it's an advice that he gives on acting upon that and living your life upon it to benefit you in this world and in the hereafter. وأيضاً أسباب الشر وما يترتب على الشر من العواقب والوخيمة في الدنيا والآخرة. And even it, it brings you up the evil that you will come across in this world and what you can do to avoid it in this world to benefit in the hereafter. وهذا مفصل في القرآن تفصيلا فيه كفاية وفي وفي القرآن بينت سبيل المصلحين. And this all is elaborated in the Quran and it was given a clear vision. At the same time, it speaks about those who are righteous. وبينت أيضا سبيل المفسدين and also the path upon those who are disbelievers in a path upon those who have been corrupt and those people who cause destruction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ And this is how we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we elaborate upon these words. And the, and the path of those who are corrupt is clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, we've made it clear for the people. We've made it clear for you. It's all in the Qur'an. والله يعلم المصلحة من المفسد and who is more knowledgeable and more knowing upon those who are righteous and those are corrupt than Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you he knows whom you'll come across in this world I mean the beauty of the Quran and how to start in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to you Alif Lam Mim ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين alright Alif Lam Mim this book has no doubt in it whatsoever and it's a guidance for those who are pious. <coughs> and then after that, he speaks about إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ The disbelievers, whether, whether you warn them or do not warn them, or advise them and do not advise them, they will not believe. إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those people. <coughs> and he knows what's in their hearts. And then after that, he speaks about the hypocrites whom you will come across. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسُ قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَاءُ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَهَاءُ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hypocrites and continues to speak upon them until وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ the creation of mankind and then after that it brings you the history of those who had come before and gave hardships to Bani Israel. And you will go, Surah Al-Baqarah itself is a treasure. It speaks about everything that occurs in the Quran in one surah. So if people were to contemplate the words of Allah, they will understand the value that comes from behind it. وبعد ذلك إذا تأملت أخبار الأمم وأيام الله في أهل طاعته وأهل معصيته طابق ذلك ما عمل ما عملته من القرآن والسنة ورأيته بتفاصيل ما أخبر الله به ووعد به وعلمت من وعلمت من آياته في الآفاق ما يدلك على أن القرآن حق وأن الرسول حق وأن الله ينجز وعده لا محالة فالتاريخ تفصيل 
لجزء لجزئيات ما عرف ما عرفنا الله ورسوله من الاسباب الكليه للخير والشر. He said you will come across many places in the Quran and occurrences in the Quran that will show you the days that will come ahead of you and what you will face. And you will come to understanding in those details from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told you and warned you about and what he had promised you. And what have you understood from his Quran, from his, the verses in the Quran. And this will, will guide you to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Quran is truthful and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is truthful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his promises will come. La mahala. I mean, we have a great example nowadays. وقضينا إلى بني إسرائيل في الكتاب لا تفسدون في الأرض مرتين ولا تعلون علوا كبيرا. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "We decree to the people of Bani Israel in the book that you will they will rise in power and you will cause mischief on earth." وكان وعدا. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "It's a promise that will come." And many more of these verses in the Quran. <clears throat> And then we have from the examples of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his hadith. He said, there will come a time where the world and the fronts will unite against you. And we live it. He said, well, people of, where Muslim believers will become wahan, will affect their hearts. Weakness, what does that mean? <laughs> the love, the attachment to this world and fearing to die. Because that attachment to this world makes you love it so much that you fall into its desires that you know that you're wrong for it. So you fear to, to die. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish you for what you have acted upon. It doesn't mean that people doesn't, they want, they don't want to die. No. It's the attachment to this world that makes you fear what occurs after death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have great examples from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? When Hadith Jibreel, for example, when he asked him for the sign of time, or the hour, what did he say? And talida al-amatu rabbataha. When the mother gives birth to its caretaker. You see that meaning word. When the child starts telling the parent what to do. The child starts talking back to the parents. That's a sign of time. It's a sign of end of time. We see it and we live it. Parents nowadays fear talking to their child to tell them that they're wrong at something because how they retaliate. And subhanAllah, back then the child, you know, one look from the father or the mother, you know you're dead. And for me growing up, I did something in the masjid that my father gave me that look, everybody in the masjid knew. When I go back home, I'm getting <laughs> Because there was that, it was understood. Nowadays, the father can't even speak up to the child. They're like, I don't want to be too rough and too Until the child grows and then they're on their deathbed. And I ask them, Where's your, where are your children at? They're not coming. The brother died and passed away and none of his children came, and came to see him. Do I blame the child? A little bit because they're old enough to understand. Because they, but then at the same time, I blame the parent. Because that's how you did. That's how, what you did raising the child. And then we have, he said, وَأَن تَرَى الْحُفَاةَ الْأُرَاتِ رِعَاءَ الشَّاءِ يَتَطَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ You will come across people who were once barefooted, shepherds, living in tents in the deserts, rising in tall buildings. We see it nowadays, and they will compete with one another. Look at nowadays, you see uh, uh, Ibn Salman, Allah. what did he do? <laughs> He's, he's having all these um, uh, mega projects in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, right? He's trying to, he's trying to compete with um, Dubai. Yeah. It's a sign of time. Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his question, he said, even in this land, he said, he said, yes, even in this land. And we are living it, and they're competing with one another about who will rise in buildings. When people, they were nothing but Qutta. Um, Ali said, they were nothing but Qutta al turuq I'm trying to make Hajj, so let me. <laughs> Allah Mustaan. We are going to say, Allah Ta'ala, if you have a little Quran, or a Hidayah, or a Sunday, or a little Ibar, Umdur it Tariq. He said, if you were to contemplate the Quran and take it from its examples, 
and its guidance and the, and the sunnah and you were take by these examples and warnings that came in the Quran. The history itself, if you go through the Quran, you will understand all of this came in the Quran. <clears throat> and the situations of the Ummah and the nations that have come before you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives you the reason of Aquba and how to serve the punishment, the reasons of punishment, and how to survive that punishment. What can you do to avoid that punishment? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and because of this, how did, how did Yunus alayhi salam escape the punishment from Allah? And this is how we save the believers. How were they saved? How was he saved? The dua. He returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in humility. He sought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for his actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna ala wa amanu. We, He said, we will give victory and we will aid our believers and our messengers for what they have done of goodness and acts of righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as long as you, you, you act by that and you do by the acts of righteousness, and it is our duty to save the believers and to aid them and bring them victory. For what? For, all, for following our commands and our directions and what we had guided them to. If you fall into these requirements, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Haqqullahi ala al-ibad wa haqqul ibadi ala Allah. Kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the right that is due, is, is due to Allah or owed to Allah. And the right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is due to his, his servants. And that is what? For the ibad, ayya'budullaha wa la yushriku bihi shay'a. It's to worship Allah and not associate with anything with anyone with Allah. And then, for the servants, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, for me, my job is to return to Nidwant. is to bring them victory and to aid them and make them enter Jannah. As long as they act upon that and they fulfill la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, and then Muhammad Rasulullah, and they live by that and act by that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then we will return to them that reward. We will aid them, we will bring them victory upon that. نعم فالأمر الثاني أن يحذر مغالظة نفسه على هذه الأسباب وهذا من أهم الأمور فإن العبد يعرف أن المعصية والغفلة من الأسباب المضرة له في الدنيا هو آخرتها ولا بد ولكن تغالظه نفسه بالاتكال على عفو الله ومغفرته وتارة وبالتسويف بالتوبة وبالاستغف والاستغفار وباللسان تارة وبفعل المندوبات تارة وبالعلم تارة وبالاحتجاج بالقدر تارة وبالاحتجاج بالأشباح والنذراء تارة وبالاقتداء بالأكابر تارة أخرى The second part I want to read that one Page 50 First paragraph on page 15. Go ahead. To be aware of misleading yourself in yours and. <laughs> in yourself, yourself in input. Implementation. implementation of causes this is the f from the most <coughs> important matters the servant will unavoidably know that sins and heedlessness are from causes for harm in own in his own world wor wordly of phrases in and in his hereafter yet his soul may mislead itself in sorely depending enormously depending on the pardon and forgiveness of allah at times 
procrastination. Procrastination at times uttering of a superficial word that only has an effect on the tongue to seek forgiveness at times performing permissible actions at times gaining some knowledge at times falsely using False. falsely using the excuse of the die divine divine, 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 divine decree, decree decree at times and excusing oneself by the actions of his peers and following those greater in stature than stature than him at other times. No, exactly. So, to be aware of misleading yourself in your implementation of the causes, and this is from the most important matters. The servant will unavoidably know that sins and heedlessness are from the causes for harm in his own worldly affairs and in his hereafter. Yet their soul may mislead itself in erroneously depending on the pardon and forgiveness of Allah at times. Procrastination at times, uttering a superficial word that only has an effect on the tongue to seek forgiveness at times, performing permissible actions at times, gaining some knowledge at times, falsely using the excuse of the divine decree at times, and excusing oneself by the actions of their peers and the following those greater in, sta in, in stature than him at other times. Now, the second part is for us to understand one thing. ولاحظ سبحانه وتعالى يعني هذا الرجل المصلح يعني سبحان الله ابن القيم is trying is like a is like a is like a parent in the situation. كم وربي and the way of his wordings and explanation of certain parts. ف. He explained إلى أمرين تحقق بهم السعادة two things that you can acquire happiness with. الأمر الأول أن تعرف الأسباب التي تكون بها السعادة لتفعلها والأسباب التي يكون بها الهلاك ليجتنبها. First is to know the causes of things that bring you happiness, right? And the things that bring you hardship so you can avoid it. <coughs> So, to be, so there are two things like we said. The first is what? It's to know the reasoning of things that bring you happenings, happiness. So then you can act upon it. And the things that might and the things of, that may destroy you. Be aware of it. Know the reasons of it. So then you can avoid it. To act upon this and to try the best of your efforts so you can Know these reasons. وذكر أعظم ما يعينك على ذلك العناية بالقرآن والسنة فيهما هذه الهدايات بما فيه الكفاية والغنية. And he said the best of things to take upon yourself to find those reasonings is the Quran and Sunnah from what they have from guidance and warnings and that is enough for a person. أولم يك الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran. <coughs> أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Isn't it enough for them that we reveal to you the Qur'an so that they can recite it upon them with one, uh, with one another? Or the Qur'an to be recited to them or onto them? Isn't that enough for them? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ Is it not enough for them that we had revealed the Qur'an for them to maybe recite it onto them? So in the Quran and in the Sunnah, it is enough for a person to find these warnings and examples. And to take the guidance that's in there upon themselves. From what they can bring themselves to save themselves from punishment. And what is there from punishment so they can be, so they can stay away from. وبعد ذلك يقول رحمه الله تعالى to be aware from to be aware of the misleading of yourself in your implementation of the causes. A lot of people fall into that. And this based upon what we say 
in many people's cultural backgrounds, what misleads them is their belief or the way they interpret things or how they were raised upon things. That in its own self can be the first opponent of a person. Now, <clears throat> so with Mu'alatul Nafs, the misleading of yourself, it's one of also one of the things a lot of young men fall into and young women. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, اغتنموا خمسا قبل خمس And he mentioned from شبابك قبل حرامك He said, take advantage of five before five. And one of them he said, شبابك قبل حرامك Your youthfulness before old age. Right? And that is because some of the, the, young, the youngsters the youth, what they do is they want to take advantage of their, their energy that they have in the youth and they were like, you know what, I'm still young, I still want to try this, I want to try that, I want to try... It's a lot of mistakes a lot of them fall into, which then corrupts themselves and corrupts the soul. They tell themselves, no, I, I believe in Allah, I'm aware of Allah, you know, I, I'm a Muslim and all that. I just want to try... The, the, until you end up trying all this, you have corrupted yourself. You've corrupted your own soul. What makes you think it can go back to normal? There is no reset button. You've experienced too much of a lot of things that can misguide you and mislead you and corrupt the heart. And the biggest problem is when the heart is affected. So he said, So one of the most misleading things to people nowadays is themselves and their implementation of certain acts upon themselves. So some of the, the shabab, يريد أن يقتنم الشباب بالاستكثار من المعاصي والاستكثار من الذنوب. So the youth, what they try to do is they want to take the energy of the youth into falling in a lot of the sin and a lot of the, a lot of the acts of misguidance. And when somebody advises them from the, from the elders or somebody of, or, uh, you know, from advising, they say that they know this already. هذا ما يعرف. And then they say, إِذَا سِرْنَا You know, فِي سُنَّةَ نَتُوب فِي سَنَةَ نَتُوب They said, if we continue upon this, we will seek repentance and forgiveness. The biggest mistake everyone does, it's the biggest lie that they tell themselves, is that we continue upon this path, we know that, we know, we know all this already, and we're aware of it. And a lot of people who tell me, it's like, yeah, I know, it's just, I'm just, you know, I'm going, uh, inshallah, like when I get one day and I get a little bit, I'm going to act upon righteousness. What makes you think you're going to live another day? That's, you know of the unseen, you know of the unhidden. You know you're going to live for another moment. Yeah, while you're saying this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may send the angel of death and take your soul while you're standing and you will collapse. What gives you assurance that you're going to live another year or another day? Allahu A'lam, you don't know that. But that's one of the, the, the biggest things that stand in a lot of people's way, is the, the, the misleading of oneself. And then, it was لَا تَزُولُ قَدْمًا عَبْدَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْأَلُ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ It was said in a hadith that لَا تَزُولُ مُقَدْمًا عَبْدًا يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ A foot will not step on the day of judgment until they are questioned upon four. And umrihi fima afna. Their life, what do they spend it upon? Spend it on. What did they waste their life on? Wa an shababihi fima abla. And their youth. What did they do in their youth? What did they use that youth, the youthful energy? Into what? What did they put it into? They think that because they're still young, they have the world waiting on to them until they get older. And how many people from the young age build empires, conquered the world? The Muslims at the age of 12, and we had companions who came to the Prophet at the age of nine, they couldn't go to battle until the age of 11. So then they were waiting. So he, one of the companions hit the age of 10 and he went to the Prophet I want to join the army. I want to join the fight for the sake of Allah. They told him, you're not ready yet. Go back and study, and then next year you can enter. The hastiness into fighting for the sake of Allah. 
those were warriors. You know, many of many of people nowadays, at the age of twenty, they still consider themselves children. It is true. And it will gradually keep on pushing forward until like people at the age of 30, 35, 40, and they were like, we're still young. Ya akhi, subhanakallah. It is a sad truth that we face. You see kids who are still, this is, at the age of 20, like, I'm still 20, you know, I'm still 20, like, I'm still young, and like, you know, I have my life ahead of me. 20 years in this world is not, it's not a, sh a, small, a small amount, I'm sorry. 18 years is not a small amount. 15 years is not a small amount. You're able to, co to contemplate and comprehend and make decisions of your own. You're not young no more. Now, scientifically, you're an adult. Islamically, you're an adult. I don't care if I, like, I seriously do not care how the Western society views it. You're an adult. When a man hits their puberty, he's an adult. When a woman hits her puberty, she's an adult. Raise them like an adult. Many mistakes that people that fall into nowadays, they fell to the, to the Western society how they consider adults at the age of 18. Not even, not even age of 18. That's the legal age of certain things. Age of 21 is when you kind of like enter the realm of, no. The moment your brain starts, you know, having the intellect to make decisions of its own, then you are going to be raised based upon that. We fail to raise our children on that. And it's one of the biggest mistakes of our own. But what we have to understand, everybody will be valued and asked upon, about these certain things. Their age and, their, and the time that they spent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving. And the rahmatah and his mercy is, is vast and wide. As long as a person acts upon goodness and righteousness. And we will speak upon this in the next session. About many people's misunderstanding of the mercy of Allah. And, and what I love about Ibn al-Qayyim in this book. He mentioned it. It's one of the things I've, I was questioning. That my sisters asked me about the misconcepts. The misconceptions of people in Islam. And the misconceptions that they have is about the mercy of Allah. They think that the mercy of Allah, the doors, even if they sin, do whatever, it's, Allah is merciful. Ibn al-Qayyim came to clarify that. It's as if, subhanAllah, as if Ibn al-Qayyim, he's with us right now and knows about the issues that we face today. And many people, he said, وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ يَظُنُّ أَنَّهُ لَوْ فَعَلَ مَا فَعَلْ ثُمَّ قَالَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ زَالَ أَثَرُ الذَّنْبِ وَرَاحَ هَذَا بِهَذَا Many people nowadays, they think that if they fall into any certain act, Ibn Qayyim says, they commit a sin and they act upon disobedience. And then they say, Astaghfirullah. That the, the trail of, of sin is gone. And all that, that's it. That removed that and wiped out. And many people, for many of the sins of a person that they fall into, it is not easily, especially al kabair from the major sins. There has to be complete repentance. And it comes from the saying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, As-salawatu al-khams wal-jum'atu ila al-jum'ah وَرَمَضَانُ إِلَىٰ رَمَضَانُ كَفَّارَةُ لِمَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَا مَجْدَنَبَةِ الْكَبَائِرِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيَّآتِكُمْ الْمُرَادْ بِالسَّيَّآتِ الصَّغَائِرِ وَنُدْخِلُهُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith, in this, in this chain of in the narration, he says the five prayers <coughs> and الْجُمْعَةُ إِلَى الْجُمْعَةُ Friday to a Friday and from Ramadan to Ramadan, kafaratul lima baynahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive what's in between them. As long as you avoid the major sins, al-kabair. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in tajtanibu kaba'ira ma tunhawna an. If you avoid what the major sins that you have been told to avoid, we will forgive you. No kathir ankum siyyatikum. We will forgive other, everything else. Wa nudkhilukum mudkhalan karima. And we'll make sure that you enter an honorable entrance. وقال رحمه الله تعالى وقال لي رجل من المنتسبين إلى الفقه أنا أفعل ما أفعل ثم أقول سبحان الله وبحمده مئة مرة وقد غفر ذلك أجمعه. So he said it had come to me from people who have in this understanding of fiqh. They said I act upon this and this. And then I say, Subhanallah, wa bihamdih, a hundred times. And then it is forgiven for me. Now, if you act about, upon things knowing that you're in the wrong, and then you basically, let's say for example, I will commit a sin at 7 o'clock, but 7.50, I'll make repentance. I'll put that on my schedule and time it. Do you think, do you, you would, Play that, you know, mockery game with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a lot of people's issue. They're like, you know, I want to do certain things so I don't regret it, but I know it's wrong and I will seek repentance and forgiveness. Do not take, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not take me as a joke. Do not try to take me as a mockery. And this is makr. And this is, you know, you know plotting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is against the commands of Allah. وَهَذَا جَهْلٌ مُطْبَقْ وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ And this is complete ignorance. We seek refuge in Allah from this. كَمَا صَحَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَّهُ قَالْ مَنْ قَالَ فِي يَوْمٍ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةٍ حُطَّتْ خَطَايَاهُ وَلَوْ كَانَتْ مِثْلُ زَبَدِ الْبَحْرِ And it is from the narration of Prophet in a day, subhanallah wa bihamdih, a hundred times, their sins are forgiven as if it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe them as like the ocean wipes one another. وقال لي آخر من أهل مكة نحن إذا فعل أحدنا ما فعل اغتسل وطاف بالبيت أسبوعا وقد محي عنه ذلك. طاف بالبيت أسبوعا يعني سبعة أشواط. So in the, now he said another person came to me, Ibn al Qayyim, and he said, Man from Ahli Mecca, people from some people from Ahli Mecca, they said, when we act upon certain things and we, com we commit a sin, we make ghusl. And then we do tawaf, usbu'an. And then that wipes, and that wipes our sins. And then usbu'an meaning around seven, or uh, seven times, some say it's, a, it's as in a week. Now, Ibn al-Qayyim said, they leave everything behind, prayers and all the mandatory acts, and they just continue, they just act upon that and think that everything is forgiven. That's ignorance. You don't act upon that. And he said, another said, وَقَدْ صَحْ عَنَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَّهُ قَالْ أَذْنَبَ عَبْدًا ذَنْبًا فَقَالَ أَيَّا رَبْ أَصَبْتُ ذَنْبًا فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرَ لَهُ ذَنْبًا ثُمَّ مَكَثَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ أَذْنَبَ ذَنْبًا آخَرْ فَقَالَ يَا أَيْ رَبْ أَصَبْتُ ذَنْبًا فَاغْفِرْ لِي so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَغَفَرَ اللَّهُ ذَنْبَهُ ثُمَّ مَكَثَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ أَذْنَبَ آخَرْ فَقَالَ أَيَا رَبْ أَصَدْتُ ذَنْبًا فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَقَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ عَلِمَ عَبْدِ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبًّا يَغْفِرُ الذَّنْبَ وَيَأْخُذُ بِهِ قَدْ غَفِرْتُ لِعَبْدِي فَلْيَصْنَعْ مَا شَاءَ Now, this hadith, a lot of people take it as an excuse to fall into the sin. And they take it as something that they can act upon in sinning, which is the biggest mistake. 
So Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Adnaba abdi dhanban. My servant has committed a sin. And then they said, Ya Rabb, oh Allah, I've committed an act of sinning. Faghfir li, so forgive me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Faghfartu lah. So I forgave them. Thumma makatha, masha'Allah. And then after a while, they committed another sin. And I said, oh Allah, I've committed a sin, so forgive me. Oh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I forgave them. And then they acted upon that again, and, and they said, oh Allah, forgive me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ali ma abdi, my servant knew and Allah that Allah forgives all of his sins and takes it upon him. So he said, Qad ghafartu li abdi. So I forgave my servant. So they can act upon what they can do whatever they want. Now people take that part that I can sin all I want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the doors to sinning. I can sin all I want, I can do whatever I want. And I just go back to repentance. No. If it's not in sincerity, like we said, the heart has to be attentive when making when seeking forgiveness. When seeking repentance, you have to be there with your heart, fulfillingly seeking that repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha asa. He said, O you who believe, repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, fulfill, in full sincerity, to asa, and now here, so that Allah may forgive you for your sins. Because it comes from, 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 from how sincere are you. That's what he said. A dua have to be much more powerful than the calamity that afflicts a person. And we will continue this, inshallah. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. Jazakumullahu khair.